But the park that really got the short shift to my first batch of videos was Animal Kingdom, since I had only been twice. So let's take a look at Camp Mini Mickey, which I assumed was just a kid's area, but in actuality, it's even less than that. It's themed as a campground where everyone's favorite Disney characters hike, go fishing, and get eaten by bears? What the hell? And what wondrous campground things are there to do at this camp? Ah, uh, character meet and greets, and that's pretty much it. Why is this area so cheap? Well, it was originally supposed to be Beastly Kingdom, a fantasy realm that sounds absolutely kick-ass, complete with a dragon roller coaster. But the park went over budget, so all that's left of Beastly Kingdom are a few leftover icons, and whatever ideas the Imagineers brought to Islands of Adventure's Lost Continent when they left for Universal. That said, there is one reason to cross this bridge, and that's the Festival of the Lion King. Yeah, I was remiss not to try and get to this before releasing the original Animal Kingdom video, considering when Animal Kingdom first opened, it was practically marketed as the Lion King Park. Located in a theater in the round that's bigger than a black box, this is just one of a handful of live shows based on Disney's animated flicks of the 90s, and I'll talk about some others when we get to Hollywood Studios. But the main thing that sets this one apart is that it's not just a straightforward adaptation of the story, it's a festival held by the characters and their inexplicable human narrator friends, celebrating the kingdom's heritage. Each seating section is assigned a different animal, so it sucks to be you, warthogs. The human narrators teach the audience to make the animal noises, which sounds dirty when I say it out loud, but I'm sure it's perfectly innocent, right? And what's your name? Tom. Tom. Well, I think that's why he thought it's my lucky day. Festival of the Lion King. Come for the song, stay for the awkward sexual tension with the narrators. Then the animals start to enter, and it turns out animals are actually low rent Cirque du Soleil dancers. Who knew? Then we hear this familiar sound. <laughs> Bam! Parade floats with animals and a Nathan Lane mascot with a mechanical face. Okay, I realize the idea is to build it around familiar songs from the movie, but why at Simba's majestic festival does he have them sing the song from his awkward, self-centered, hedonistic youth? Hakuna Matata! Oh good, the wise, mature Simba has them sing another song that actually represents a low point in the movie's character arc and an attitude that was proven to be incorrect and had to be overcome in order to resolve the central conflict. But what do you expect from the company that constantly tries to pass Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey off as a hero instead of the disobedient troublemaker he was? Disney Parks. Missing the f***ing point. Oh, but then there are some neat acrobats dressed as monkeys, so yay! Did Simba get stoned before watching the show? Hey there, big fella. Hey, nice hat. <laughs> so, where are you from? Yikes! But then the lights dim and Timon gets scared as the head narrator comes out and sings Be Prepared. I know it sounds sordid, but you'll be rewarded. But at last, I'm given my views. I'm in just as delicious as dead. Wait, the narrator is leading a revolt against Simba? Holy crap, what a twist! The narrator, the guy who welcomed us, who we trusted, was evil all along! I thought the classic battle was between evil and the narrator, but no! Look, you can tell they're evil because of all the fire! Why is Simba so okay with this happening? people applauding. The narrator just sang about overthrowing the king right in front of him. Was... was that really part of the act? I mean, I understand respecting your culture's history, but Simba really wanted a musical number about killing his dad to be part of the festival? Do Civil War reenactments take some time for a John Wilkes Booth tap dance? Man, lions are weird. Oh, but now it all makes sense because it's time for an avian Kama Sutra. <laughs> What's your favorite position? Back to back. How would that even... Well, as long as you're happy with it. Go team! 
like the Jerry Lewis. The world in perfect harmony with all its living things. Now that, my friends, is a time of joyous celebration. Oh good, evil narrator went back to his alternate dimension and we have hippie narrator back. And now, everybody, it's time for you to join in the fun as we kick off our celebration finale. The natives are getting restless. What, singing Nazi hyena songs wasn't restless enough? I'm sorry, I can't get past that. Almost every song in the show has been either from Simba's hedonistic douchebag youth or from the villain. You can't just take them out of the context of the story and have them work. Ah, but now it's time for a cover of the song that puts the royal in royalty disputes. Well, now, I think we are being challenged here. I'll tell you what, I'm not into more hogs against your giraffes and your elephants. It's finally happened. Disney is pitting its own audience members against each other in a bloody battle royale for their own amusement. So everyone sings the lion sleeps tonight, some children get abducted, and that's the finale, right? Wrong. We need a medley of all the songs whose presence made no sense. Hey, careful where you swing that bird, you'll chop somebody's head off. Well, except for the living things who are still single. juxtaposition makes me realize that this might have been a much better villain song. I'm going to be a mighty king, so enemies beware. I just can't Rock Eyewitness News. And then all the performers clear the stage, leaving the king just sitting there. Man, Pride Rock Secret Service is lacking. Okay, snarky nitpicks aside, this is actually a pretty good show. It may not hold up to logical scrutiny, but even then it makes more sense than some of the shows that actually try to follow the plots of the movies they're based on. But we'll get to that later. But what it lacks in cohesiveness, it more than makes up for in spectacle. The dancers, the acrobats, the colors, the lights, in person it's all quite breathtaking. And my initial opinion of Animal Kingdom as a whole would have been a lot higher had I seen this originally. 